Hey guys, Wes with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and this is my Kawasaki Ninja. It's a 2005, and I picked this bike up for $270. Now the whole goal with this was to get a bike for our $1,000, 1,000 mile adventure ride, and uh, I think I did okay. I, I had one of these Ninjas about 10 years ago, and I had a lot of fun with that little bike. And believe it or not, I'm kind of a hoarder. I also had a lot of pieces and parts left over from working on that bike and owning it. So that was kind of my motivation. Now, in this video, I wanted to give the guys that are interested in the bike a closer look at everything I did to this to get it adventure ready. Um, so let's go through that. All right, so probably the biggest and top priority on my list for this bike to change and improve was the handlebars. So the stock bars, if you guys know, they're really low and they're really narrow. And so that was a must change for me. And so I started researching and looking into some different options. And basically what I came up with was fabbing up a new bar mount that bolted onto the top triple clamp and it was secure enough to mount some moto bars on. So I got inch and an eighth bars on here. And with that, I did have to extend the brake line. Um, and so I just found another one that was plenty long enough. I had to do some crazy routing with that. But with the throttle cable and clutch cable, I was able to change routing a little bit and just keep those stock because they're pretty, well, the throttle cable is pretty unique and I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I was glad I was able to keep the stock throttle cable. So now moving on, if you guys know much about these Ninjas, you know that the engine is uh, suspended in the frame. And so there is nothing protecting the bottom, bottom side of that engine. I knew I had to do something because I know these guys, the Rocky Mountain guys love gnarly stuff. We can't go do a ride without getting into some rocks and rough stuff. So I scrounged the skid plate and built some mounting for that thing and really just beat everything up. I didn't want to go chances route by bolting it to the pipes. So I bolted it to my frame. It stiffened everything up. And as you can see, the skid plate did not make it all the way through the ride, but I was super glad I had it. It's got some gnarly dents, scrapes and uh, dings in it, but it definitely saved my bacon out there on the trail. All right, next thing on my list was the seat. Now this is something that I wasn't sure if I was gonna change or not, but Chance and I went and did kind of a pre-run ride to shake these things down and make sure they're gonna be okay. And my knees were locking up after about 40 miles. And so I knew I had to do something. And I was to the point where I was just gonna rig something up and put just a big pad on there and duct tape it on. But I ended up scrounging an old, you know, little bike seat and um, fabbing up some foam. I found an ATV seat cover and covered it all up. That's not the best looking thing, but it definitely helped out on the ride. I sit up a lot higher now and it was just a lot more comfortable for this long thousand mile ride. So the next thing to tackle was suspension. Um, and I started with the forks. So Justin had already done some research. He found some fork uh, threaded valve stems. And so we had the machine shop thread uh, drill and tap our fork caps. And so we were able to put uh, valve stems in the top of those and add some pressure to them. So I ran about 20 PSI in my forks and it definitely stiffened them up. It made them feel a lot better so I could charge that off-road rough stuff and really have a good time. Um, I also rebuilt the forks and put some higher weight oil in there just to kind of slow everything down and help out with all that. Now with the shock, I did some research and found out that the newer Ninjas when they revamped them all in 08, the shock actually bolts right onto these older bikes. So from 08 to 12, I found one of those old shocks, a used one, and bolted it up to this thing and actually got a little extra ground clearance. And I don't know if that's because my shock was worn out or if the, if the newer ones are just a little bit longer. But anyway, got that bolted up. My main priority with that was getting some preload and then also a little bit stiffer spring. So it definitely helped out the biggest downside though was the shock blew on the first freaking day of the ride. So I rode 900 miles with no rear shock and it ended up causing more problems for me. So that was a bit of a bummer, but I was happy after the research was done and cool to just find that information out. And the last thing that I had to tackle with this Ninja was getting luggage attached to it. So with the stock bodywork and everything that the stock bike has going on, it gave me good mounting points to put a set of racks on here. So I opted to go that route. I got some hoops and then fabbed up all the mounts myself and I'm getting better at welding. So I had a lot of fun with that. But as you can see, I was able to mount all the tusk bags up on the rear of this and was able to take more than I even should have on the ride. 
So those are all the major things that I had to tackle on this bike before I could even attempt the 1,000 miles. Um, so now I just wanna go through and show you some of the other things that I did to this bike and added uh, just to give that extra off-road capability and just make it a little more worthy for uh, our adventure ride. So tires were probably, you know, at the top of my list as far as that goes. I had to get something off-road worthy on here. So I picked up a set of the Bridgestone Adventure Cross AX41s. As you can see, the wheels are the same size, front and rear. And so I actually ended up putting a rear tire on the front. No, I don't recommend it, but does it look badass? Yes, it does. So moving on from the tires, uh, as you can see with the bike, the way I bought it, it didn't have any of the stock gauge cluster instruments up there or the headlight mount. So I found those online and got that piece together. And then with lighting, I had to upgrade that because I know the Rocky Mountain guys, we like to get caught in the dark, especially with taking old crappy bikes on a thousand mile ride. I knew we were gonna have some long days, so I needed good lighting. So I actually added the Tusk six inch LED light bar onto this thing. I love the look of it and it throws a lot of light when you're riding it dark. Moving up from there, I put heated grips on this thing and those are just a staple on every single one of our adventure bikes. And then for foot pegs, um, I scrounged a set of old Honda pegs. They almost fit. I had to do a little modification to them, but got those babies mounted up. So I got good grip when I'm riding off road. And last but not least is cosmetics and making this bike look good. So the previous owner, I don't know what direction he was headed with it, but I was going in another direction. So I stripped everything down. I painted the side panels black and had the tank painted blue. And this thing looks really good, especially in the daylight. It's got a slight sparkle to it. I love the way it turned out. And then to top this thing off, I had to keep with the Cool Kids Club. And so I put some underglow on it. I just have green. I don't have as many colors as Chancellor, but it still was a lot of fun when we were riding through the cities at night, getting a lot of looks and breaking necks. All right, guys, and that does it for this glorified crotch rocket scooter build for our $1,000, 1,000 mile adventure ride. Now, if you guys haven't watched that series, be sure and go check it out. It's a lot of fun. And we've also got some other fun series on our YouTube channel. So be sure and subscribe for that. Thanks so much for watching.